The big question is, do I still love the Apple Watch or is it just a necessity now? Okay, so I've been using the Apple Watch Series 10 for about two months now, apart from occasionally at the weekend where I use the Huawei Watch Ultimate, which is prettier and has a better battery and a few other things. But I think this means that I am now back in the land of being an Apple Watch user just one who occasionally slips off at the weekend to do something naughty. And this has left me in a bit of a quandary about my opinion of the Apple Watch. Just to confirm, I am a massive Apple Watch fan. I've, I bought the first one in 2015 and every year since then I've worn it on my wrist, apart from most of this year where I've flirted with Android watches and Garmin watches. The problem is that the Apple Watch hasn't really changed since 2015. And before you hit the comments and call me an idiot for being you know, way over the top about this. It hasn't, it's, you know, it's still ostensibly the same product. It's the Apple Watch. Okay, the hardware has been iterated over time. Watch OS has had lots of stuff added to it. It's been refined. The whole package has been turned into a very good fitness watch, but a bit like the iPad, the Mac, the iPhone, the Apple TV, it's just what Apple does. The question is, does that make this something that I love or is, is it just a necessity? So in this updated review of the Apple Watch Series 10, I'm gonna go through what I love about it, what I don't love about it, whether you should buy it and what this is all about. Whenever we talk about devices like the Apple Watch, it's all about gaining insights into your health and lifestyle. But what if we could take those insights even further? That's where this video sponsor, Weltery, comes in. And this is a state-of-the-art app that turns your health data into actionable advice for managing stress and energy. I've been using Weltery for the last few weeks and I can confirm it does a very good job of that. Weltery uses advanced AI and cardio interval, cardio interval, that basically to analyze your heart rate variability, which is basically the same tech that astronauts use. Whether you're tracking stress after a busy workday or checking if you've got enough energy for that evening run, Weltery delivers real-time personalized insights. But here's the best part. It works seamlessly with devices like the Apple Watch, smart rings, or even just your phone camera. Plus it connects to other health apps and gadgets for a complete wellness picture visualized through very simple user-friendly graphs in the fantastic app. Trust me, if I can understand stuff in this app, you can. If you're ready to take control of your stress and energy levels, download Welltree today using that link in the description for a 40% discount on your annual subscription. I can confirm that Welltree has made a difference genuinely to the way that I look at my health metrics. It could do the same for you. Let's start with the positive stuff. What do I love about the Apple Watch Series 10? The first thing is that it just works. And this is a kind of unofficial slogan for Apple. If you're an Apple person, you have definitely used that phrase. It just works, whether or not it's your iPhone, your MacBook, your Apple TV, whatever it is, it just works compared to the competition. And I think the Apple Watch is the ultimate example of that, particularly in Series 10 form, because it's just the best version of this watch. It's, you know, it's got the best chip in it. it it's so refined. It never does anything weird. It never crashes. Have you ever had your Apple Watch crash? Let's say within the last couple of years. I, I had a few issues with older versions, but the Series 10, it just... It just works. Next up, we have that display, which is bigger, brighter, and utterly lovely. And we now have this incredibly thin frame, which works for a square watch. I think if a watch has to be square, which isn't my favorite form factor, but if it has to be square, it has to sit very flush against your wrist. And the Series 10 does. The next thing that I love about this watch is ecosystem related, and it's the fact that I can use it to log into my Mac and authenticate things on Mac OS. It saves loads of time. For instance, if I wanna log into my M4 Mac mini over there, I just walk up to it, press the space bar, and this unlocks it. And then if I need to install software or do something on there which requires authentication, I don't have to type anything in. I just do two clicks of that and it's done. And that's it. And equally, I'm very aware that apart from the display, all of those things are just generic Apple Watch things. They're not specific to the Series 10, which kind of illustrates my issue. Okay, time for the negative things about the Apple Watch Series 10. I'm not about to pull it apart because this is a fantastic wearable, but there are three things that I don't really like about it. The first thing is that it just works. And yes, that was the first thing on my list of things that I love about the Apple Watch Series 10, but the reason it makes this list is because it's just a bit dull. I just can't really get excited about the Apple Watch anymore. I used to, you know, from 2015, obviously when it was first introduced, up to the first Apple Watch Ultra, I was genuinely excited and you know, 
just uh, there was a lot of anticipation about what it would do next you know what what would apple do next with the apple watch and i think we know the answer to that now which is is basically make the display bigger make it brighter make it thinner that's it. Second on my list is the battery life. And I know I got a bit of stick for this in my first review of the Series 10, but I don't care. It just really annoys me. I don't understand why a watch like the Huawei Watch Ultimate can last many, many days versus this, which can last maximum two days. And yes, the Series 10 does charge very quickly, which is the saving grace, but I just feel like I'm charging it all the time. Please, if someone can explain in the comments why other watches last for days and days and days, and this one doesn't and they both do the exact same stuff if you can explain that get involved number three on my list is the fact that i don't like square watches i'm very boring about this i keep talking about it so i'll stop talking about it now for the last time ever i promise i would much rather have a round apple watch this just has 1990s casio vibes and i'm not here for that anymore Right, should you buy an Apple Watch Series 10? I think you'll fall into one of several categories for this. The first one is if you've got an older Apple Watch. If, you, if your Apple Watch is starting to show signs of age, just get one. The second thing is if you're thinking about buying your first ever wearable and you have an iPhone, I would shop around a little bit. I'd, I'd look at the Apple Watch Series 10, absolutely, but equally, just have a look at the competition. Have a look at some of the Garmin watches, the Huawei's, the OnePluses, unless you're a massive Apple fan and the ecosystem stuff is utterly you know, you can't imagine not having that, then just go and get one. However, there's something else that I think you should check out. <sighs> Hang on. This is the Samsung Galaxy Ring. And yes, I got the wrong size, but regardless of that, I have been wearing it for the last few weeks because I just wanted to see how it compares against the Apple Watch. And in reality, they're fairly incomparable because that's a wrist computer and this is just a health tracker. But there's a few things that I really like about this. The first thing is the sleep tracking. If you don't like wearing watches in bed, this is the solution. You don't know it's there. You slip it on your finger and done. The second thing is the design. I really like the look of the Galaxy Ring. It's not too big and flashy. Some smart rings are really chunky and they're just not my style. Check me out. They're just, they just don't work for me personally. This is very understated, but very smart looking. The third thing is the charging case, which is utterly brilliant. You basically put your ring in there and it gives you an indication of how much battery is remaining. You close the lid and it starts charging, which means you can take this anywhere and charge on the go. It's really, really convenient, but it also brings me to the things that I don't like about this. And that is the battery life, because although it does have many, many days of battery, you know, I, think, I think you get a week out of this, because there's no obvious way to check the battery life when it's on your finger, you keep forgetting to charge it, which means it's often on your finger with no battery life, which then means you've missed days of tracking sleep and all that sort of stuff. So you have to get into this routine of charging it, which I guess is no different to this, but because the length of time between charges is longer. For some reason, that just always means I forget to charge it. It's really annoying. The second thing is that I don't wear this during weights workouts because it scratches up and I, I want it to look nice and new, basically. And that is a problem because it means I'm not getting all of my health tracking done. And the last thing is that it's a very hard product to recommend because if you've got a smartwatch, I don't know why you'd have one of these. And if you don't have a smartwatch, you've got to really, really want to track your health to buy one. This costs 350 quid, which is a lot of money. It's not a simple purchase. It's one of those things that you've got to look at and think, yes, that you know that's going to pay for itself fairly quickly. And if you're taking it off for weights workouts and forgetting to charge it, it's a tricky one. But if those things don't bother you and you're not the smartwatch kind of person, I think the Galaxy Ring is really worth looking at. Okay, in conclusion about the Apple Watch Series 10, there's never been a better time to buy one because it's absolutely fantastic. It's the best Apple Watch they've ever made, obviously. And if you're coming from an earlier version, you will be happy with it. Just bear in mind the two things that you'll notice are that big display and the thin frame. That's it. I just wish it had better battery life and a circular face, but I know that I'm in the minority with both of those things. If you fancy shopping around, hang on for a link to my full review of those new Huawei watches. Oh, and guys, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, but you've been watching this channel for a little while, just give it a little click. It makes a massive difference. Thank you.